And these builders that are going down and going under isn't because, oh, shit, I wish I had been able to hang that door properly or yeah, I had to fit that door lock. It's because yeah. no one gives them that training or that exposure to that uh, business. To, to running a business. business. My dream is to improve the residential building industry for all involved. Throughout this podcast, we're going to be chatting to all types of industry experts to make sure that builders, tradies, and clients all have a fantastic experience. G'day guys, we are back here in the shed for another episode of Level Up. Um, another cracking one today, so it's been a little while since we've uh, had a builder on. We've had everyone else to do in the industry, but we, uh, we got Michael here today from Linear Constructions. How you go, mate? Oh, mate, living the dream. Living, living the, the dream, dream yeah. <laughs> so um, Michael is another one that uh, we've really just connected through uh, Instagram, haven't we? Yeah, and um, yeah, had a yeah. couple of messages backwards and forwards on there and then only just caught up recently. Hmm. And I, find that I found this quite funny. I was, um, I was doing a little bit of homework on you and I looked up <laughs> Facebook and uh, you got a bit of a session with uh, the Hoff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't think it's good for business. Um, so you, you like Baywatch, David, David Hasselhoff? Like... Mate, who doesn't? Who doesn't? <laughs> something about that man that just works. Uh, it's awesome. But, um, mate, on a serious note, you you run a, a good show. Like you, you've got a good business. Um, you're just at the, going through the stages at the moment, final stage of completing another one of your own developments. Yep. How's that been? Oh, mate, to say challenging might be an understatement. Um, I think, you know, you, we're, we haven't been spared any of the um, conditions that every other builder has been exposed to. Um, to start over the last yeah, 18, they, 18 months Yeah, sort of 18 COVID. months. Probably the, yeah. this has been, I mean, because we, we also run, um, um, we run contract work concurrently with these. Uh, it's just a better business model, I, I believe, sort of keep the cash flow plus also keep, your uh, toe dipped into the water to see what's relevant and what clients are chasing. Yeah. As well as doing your own thing, um, we scaled it up a bit. We in the last eighteen months, uh, we've done a couple of um, ranos for contracts, but we've just finished a subdivision late last year. Um, <clears throat> sorry, mid mid year last year, and we're just concluding a big five house. A five townhouse complex at Morningside. Yeah, it's um, a cracker too. I was, I was pretty impressed when I saw it the other day. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's been like I said. It's been just unbelievably challenged between supply, labour issues, and also weather. Was, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, we're really happy with the way it's sort of come together. We're just now in the final parts. Uh, the all the hard part, wrapping it up. Right, plant sealing, yeah, dealing sort of things out of your own control to, uh, to exchange titles and things like that. So. so before, I want to come back to how, how you got in the industry and, and obviously your passion and all that type of thing. But um, we've just been having a little bit of a chat before we jumped on here this afternoon and you were saying that, um, well, we were joking about that's how that's every builder's dream. Like every builder <laughs> thinks that there's this gold nugget of getting to doing your own projects. Oh, absolutely. I mean, everyone, <clears throat> it's that grass is greener sort of prospect. And I think, I think there's two things to it. Um, you know, it because I think people see it because they're they're trying to eliminate one of their issues, which is bad clients, right? But you're exchanging <laughs> that, well, 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 potentially. I'm not saying, yeah, yeah, you know, because. That, that's what they. Yeah, that's, that's what, their perception. A right? lot of people think it's a bad client, but it's actually there. Yeah, it's on that. They don't know how to Absolutely. run a business. Yeah. Um, yeah, because there's two parts to it. I think one is they think a the margins are you know like you're driving around <laughs> just yeah. yeah cash to cashed up <laughs> the rest of it you got pocket the cash falling out of your pockets you just make uh, governments sort of encroached in that space a bit and they've just gouged it so you've still you've still got them taking theirs and yeah. that's probably uh, made it a lot harder. Um, the other is obviously um, um, doing the work you think you're getting away from a problem client but now you're exchanging that for a whole bunch of other problems <laughs> i.e. where am I getting funding, the town bank, planning. town planning, council wants infrastructure so and it's all on you too like you know those things that you could charge is variations like latent condition oh you've hit rock well guess what you're paying for it you know yeah. so i like how you put it before like you, you said 
all you're doing is trading one yeah, set of problems one, for yeah. another set of problems. Yeah, trading and, one, yeah, for sure. And for a builder out there that isn't running the best business and thinks that their their answer is to get to a point to do their own projects, that's all they're doing, isn't for it? For sure. Because if you can't run a project for a client, you're not going to run any better for yourself. And if you're struggling there, believe me, you're going to be underwater. <laughs> by, the time, by the time you go to So you need yeah. to get your house in order yeah. to make that leap. You don't want to go with a business which is dysfunctional and then go, you know what, I'm going to take on all this risk now. That's going to be the answer to my problems. Yeah. Um, you need to get, <clears throat> you need to see, get and check those things that are giving you grief at that level and then before you even enter, that would be, in my humble opinion, that would yeah. be my advice. So you need to address that. Um, and get systems and processes in place and then from there, then you can sort of yeah. venture out that way if you're so inclined. Oh, mate, look, I, I couldn't agree more. We, um, we've we tried a lot of times over the years doing our own projects with, with and with different levels of success. We've mm. had a lot of success sometimes and then other times, as you say, like once mm. it's your own development, yeah. like what you set out and you do all your due diligence and you think you might have this big chunk of profit at the end can be quite easily choosed up with a town planning issue, a latent condition issue, a, a neighbour, like there's so many things that can come into play that are out of your control. Oh, absolutely. So cash <coughs> flow, like you oh, got... my terrible. I'm yeah. sitting there sweating, <laughs> going, uh, going to see if the kids could busk or something for, a, for <laughs> bringing some cash. But um, you, you sit there and it's the speed of the train. It's because generally with developing the margin's really made in the buying, right? You've yeah. got to acquire the site and you've got to jump on that immediately. So you've got to have all your ducks lined up. You don't get that due diligence like you do with contracts. So the contract stuff, you can go backwards and forwards and sort of it's obviously work through it. There's certain pressures. With the client, contract with the client. Yeah, contract yeah. work. So <clears throat> if you're procuring a contract, it's a bit more measured, whereas, whereas deals come along... And you've got to be ready, you know, and yeah. there's not like a bespoke arrangement, like this they're yeah. one off sort of scenario. So yeah. you've got to be prepared and know know enough or be connected well enough with enough people that if you're yeah. short on it, that you can draw on that network and pull the trigger. Because I know there's um like especially these days with all the social media, like there's a lot of builders out there that are doing a lot of their own projects and it and it looks fantastic yeah, they're yeah. driving the flash cars and living in the big houses smoke and and, mirrors, yeah, yeah it's all, all smoke and mirrors but they um like i i've learned a lot in the last couple of years and and i learn more as we keep growing and building a better building business mm. um guys that do get to that point where they can get the funding they take on their own project they end up they're only making the money on the sale of the product which like you said is made on the purchase yeah. of the property <clears throat> but if they actually built that so they're still not running a good business yeah. they're still not pricing the work accurately yeah. they're still dealing with overruns and variations and all these types of things even yeah. though it's their own project whereas if they run a really good business you can actually get to a point where you can make really good healthy margins for your business mm. and not have all that financial burden of taking on like well, it could be endless, the funds you've got to borrow to right. do your own project. For sure. It's, I mean, you've got to, I mean, it's, to say it's character building is an understatement. <laughs> like, mate, you're in the gun for, for everything, right? Like mm. we said, you're also, that cash flow is non-existent until the end of the contract. And like yeah. you said, you see some of these, I mean, one of the worst things I these shows that the house flippers and things like that because everyone's making yeah you know, they're just awash with money it's just yeah. a, but what they're not saying is the property market probably went up anyway so if they had have done nothing with the house they probably would have made that same margin less yeah. you know so they yeah. it's diluting their results the flip side is when the market doesn't go anywhere and then obviously yeah. and, you know you've got holding costs you've got all these other costs going at the same time so I think <clears throat> there's I th a lot to be considered in there. Oh, like, mate, and when, when it goes right, you can you yeah. can make a lot of money and you can be very successful. Yeah, but there, yeah. there's a lot more to oh, it than what people think. Definitely, yeah. You don't want to be green. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not trying. I don't want to be Debbie Downer, but you just. I think, like you said, and you're very well positioned. Like you're better positioned if you're a builder. 
it would be easier for you to become because you've got that expertise when you can value engine if you during the build and things yeah. like that that you can see potential cost savings you're not locked in unless you sell off the plan or something yeah. um, so you've got that opportunity that you can revisit and sort of bring it back and uh, and also you can probably even if you um, but if you've got separate parties of builders and developers, um, uh, the builders are so better positioned for it. But like I said, you know, you can they can end end businesses if the if the thing goes south. You yeah. Know, so. Yeah. Well, like you said, you're, you're funding the entire thing from the day you purchase the property, all yeah. your planning, approvals, yeah. build time, and then. Yeah. It, it, it could possibly sit for six, 12 months to sell, oh. like not in the current market, but no, no, but yeah, it could change sure. overnight. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, circumstances change, and you know, like, like they say, you can be smart or you can be lucky. It's always better to be lucky than smart, <laughs> you know. I mean, we so, were, we were, our timing on this one was excellent, you know, like we sold or market gave, but we got smashed, you know, like everyone. With all those prices, it doesn't matter that they all went up substantially. We wear it. Now, if the market hadn't have gone up, yeah. the element of world would say, you know, wouldn't finish us, but it, it certainly would have been a somber sort yeah, of makes, Christmas. Makes like, it hard. Yeah. And Whereas, think, yeah, if, it, if you're doing those projects for clients and you, you've got some possible contract yeah. ways that you can, chat, yeah. pass, you can pass on some of those costs. For sure. With the amount of money that we deal with as builders, the amount of interaction we have with clients, um, the amount of information that's in contracts, like all the stuff we deal with, I, I don't believe there's enough out there or, or you have to do enough of that type of thing to become a builder. Mm. Like, and that's, they're the things that most builders end up falling over with because they, they lose their passion. Like they, you, you get into it because you want to run a business, you want to be a builder, you want to, you want to build houses, buildings, whatever it may be. And that business side of it, or the client communication side of it, probably more likely, you just start going downhill. Oh, Cheryl. Well, you think about it. So, when it, so, like I was pretty green, but I thought when I was getting going, the two big ones was the technical knowledge, and like what was going to give me an advantage was commercial and a bit of contractual knowledge, right? Yeah. But to a business, they're two pretty important pillars. But a business needs about seven. But you know, and you need. Yeah. HR, you need sort of marketing, you need ca like yeah. all these financials. And it's, and even in with that experience, I still didn't get that exposed. I mean, we were, my position was a bit more concentrated by that stage, but I, I look at, say, uni, they don't teach you. And, I, and that's probably my, my beef with QVCC in a lot of ways, with they, so with the licensing, they give too much weighting to the technical side of things, which I'm, you know, you need to have some to my way. Yeah. Not enough to business management. Yeah. You know? And these builders that are going down and going under isn't because, oh, shit, I wish I had been able to hang that door properly or yeah, I had to fit that door lock. It's because yeah. no one gives them that training or that exposure to that to that uh, business. To, to running side a business. business. Yeah. And yeah. to me, that's you could almost do away with the other part I mean, I wouldn't suggest it, but you could. It's more important that your fundamentals around what's a good profitable business look like. Yeah, it needs it needs to. Um, yeah, like you got to know all the standards and mm. read plans and all those types of things. But yeah, um, yeah you've got to be able to actually run a business. Yeah. And I, I think there is a a very big gap there between, I guess, the way our industry is looked at because ultimately, like, still in this day and age. I believe personally, like builders still get looked at as more, like just another tradie. Sure. Like they don't really get seen as a professional. Like, yeah. But we are, like, we're running a business that deals with a lot of money. Yeah. Like, we're oh, yeah, dealing yeah. with someone's dream. For sure. Like, all this money, they want to build their dream home, bring, like, start a family, raise a family, retire. Like, yeah. there's, there's all these things that we deal with. And like you said, it doesn't, it doesn't matter a shit that you can hang a door, you no, can build no. a beautiful home. Yeah. And it's actually one thing that really frustrates me. Like there is so many incredible builders out there, like just craftsmen building incredible homes yeah. and renovations and buildings. And yet they come unstuck because they can't run a business. For sure. Oh, it's for sad. sure. I mean, like I said, great technicians. And that was always the thing. I thought, Jesus, you wouldn't want to be paying me by the hour rate when I was on my tools. I was so slow. But... Uh, so I needed an advantage and that was the other way I looked at it. But 
I look at it now and, you know, there's just, even when I sort of did that further train, you know, a bit of coaching and the rest of it, there was stuff there that actually enlightened me, you know, given yeah. that about businesses, you know, about break even points and, you know, yeah. what turnover you need to hit and what, if you're at what margin you're at, you know, and you go, sh- pretty and simple a- stuff. But that's not like, I but mean, that's out there, obviously. Yeah. But-, but it's okay. Not Like, I think the other, as blokes, we, uh, we're afraid to put our hand up and say, look, we, help me out here i don't know this for sure yeah um, so yeah i'm glad you touched on that so you you've done some extra additional training over the years to um obviously get you up to the position you're in now so yeah Yeah. what um like when you look back what was the turning point that you thought shit i need to i need to do something here i'm going around in circles well i guess you're on the hamster wheel it's it's i mean you have experienced we've all experienced you just it's the big it's your big hours right and you're just like you're you're a bit iso- you're definitely isolated and I and you just think there's got to be a better I think it's just your mind wonders there's got to be a better <laughs> way than this I mean what am I doing yeah, yeah you're gonna <laughs> lose it shortly but um and you know like I said I got I went and someone just dangled a pretty good carrot about charging for quotes and I said, yeah and I think look the other thing is it's a challenge because everyone's mindset is it's this it, it comes harder and harder to broaden your um like to change your mindset after the age of 27 I think only like 13 percent of people will ever change their mind and probably yeah. probably half of them are someone who's had a stroke and they've been told <laughs> been told maybe you should Reload. step away from the pie big guy you know like just step back from the pie so so that leaves you know your your wiring is such that it you're very hard like that's why you uh, kids are younger it's better to take up the length because there's still there's that neuroplasticity where you can still make yeah you know, whereas we're all, we're all set in our ways, you know. Yeah, we're all uh, we're all sort of guided, aren't we? Whether it's by friends, family, relatives, like we're all yeah. sort of pushed down this yeah. path. Yeah, and you get stuck in it. Yeah, and I have to admit, I went to it was a free seminar. It was a, sorry, it was an invitation. I went to this invitation. There was a bunch of other builders at this table, and this guy was trying to pitch how you charge for quotes. And I'm looking at these guys, and they're all canning it, and I, half of them look like they woken up under a bridge and the other this guy i don't know how he's probably younger than me but he looks like he came down with moses or something he's so i said jesus if these guys have an issue maybe there's something in this you know but it just showed you like and i just heard it and then if you can i be slightly because you've got to obviously there's two parts you could be slightly you know um it's it's good to be a little bit cynical you don't want to be you know, there's snake oil salesmen everywhere, so there's obviously that element, but you've got to be, you know, be cautious, but be open-minded that someone may have a better idea and particularly, I would say, seek advice from someone who's actually achieved it would be yeah. would be the first point of call, um, uh, whether it's mentoring or, or a bit of coaching, whether you've got to pay for coaching. Yeah. You know, because you just You've got to spend money, don't you? Absolutely. Like you money. have to spend money on yourself. And pe- people are so risk-averse, right? So people will be... They don't want to lose... They will, they're more risk-averse. The potential to make $2 is trumped by the risk of losing a dollar, right? People's, yeah. That's people's mentality. You know? yeah. So, which, understandable. And so, but... You've got to extend yourself and, and spend it. And even if you get one good idea, that could be life-changing. Yeah. You know? And um, it's amazing. You get enough good ideas and then, and like, people go, oh, is there value? You know, you see some of the cost of things, you go, well, that's a consideration. But if I get one good idea, I mean, that's a, yeah. particularly in our game, it's a multiplier. Yeah. You know? Oh, mate, I love it. I'm addicted to it. Like, all, audible books, buddy. Yeah. I'm, I love Grant Caddo, mate. He's 10x yeah, growth he's 10X. Gone, like I, uh, Well, he's the guy. He's the, he's the spruker for, you know, you get one good idea. It can, yeah. You know, yeah like, but even, like, you look at those types of guys, like, like he's, even in the last sort of four or five years, like, he's increased his worth from one billion to, like, now he's heading towards four and a half yeah. billion dollars yeah. with all the property stuff he's doing. But yeah. so you got you got guys like that that are just, like, there's, there's hundreds of them. They're spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, on training. Sure. Yeah. So it's it's it starts at any level. Yeah. But um, you touched on charge for a quote, because um, I'm really interested in this. Because obviously, um, 
I've developed a system and we, we do that system in Live Life Build. We, the pack process paid as a consultant and I'm very interested. Like you, you took that charge for a quote and turned it into your own system, didn't you? Yeah. Like you've got a bit of a three-way approach to that. Like can you run us through that a little bit? Yeah, so it's a package. Uh, so we will develop plans. So, we, so, so we'll do a design and construct package. So, uh, I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to get me to go back with someone to, with plans in a lot of ways, I'd probably rather chew glass than do, <laughs> do that. But I'm not saying never, but because, because I'm, you know, when you look at the anxiety with a client, you know, what, what's all their anxieties? Well, we're prepared to take one of them off the table. You will not get variations for design, any design, because that's how much we'll take ownership of the design development that when you hand, not talking about latent conditions or anything like that. We'll yeah, so you're still gonna, yeah, you're still going to have your latent conditions, prime cost of vinyl yep. sums, but yeah, all that. But there'll be no design. There'll be no finger pointing. There's nothing. I, mean, I know a lot of DNC is uh, with people with relationships. It's a lot more collaborative anyway. But yep. so we'll do we'll do a package where the first one will be to a concept, and if. So we'll take it to a concept. So that will generally be a survey detail plus source test. So we can just get an idea of where the estimate will be. So it'll be a ballpark estimate at that stage. We're not going yeah. to sort of, and we'll develop a concept that'll do it to their budget on whatever the viewers. If they think well, we're not a good fit, they can go. They can keep the survey. De they can keep the lot. We, and yeah. you know, even the drawings. I don't know the concepts. If they've paid for it, my view is no, it's yours. You know. But, but you're taking control. Yeah. Like we'll you're, take and ownership. You're guiding yeah. It. yeah. Yeah. And we'll develop. And because, because particularly where I thought the system was seriously lacking is there's a departure. You know, between. Uh, budgets and design. You know, oh, you know, yeah, definitely. And right. I was it's just broken. Getting, it's yeah, completely yeah. broken. And it's dysfunctional. You know, by the time the build, like the damage is done, they've gone through, got the DAs, got you know, invested all that money and emotion, yeah. only to find that this thing's not going to fly. You yeah. Know? And it, it, look, don't want to get too far off the track, but look, it is. We've got we've got a job at a, um, that we're working through at the moment with a client, and it's. It's a new architect we haven't done any work for before, but if you if you don't have a team that works and collaborates all the time and and talks daily, because you don't have a designer in house, do you? You, no. like, you build oh, a collabor well, yeah. like you collaborate with someone else. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're just a builder that's, hey, I've got this job coming up. It's 300 square meters, double garage, this, that, the other. What do you reckon? Oh yeah, 300 <laughs> grand. Like. <laughs> <laughs> or they might they send you the drawings and yeah. you have a look at it and you're like oh yeah it might be 300 grand yeah, yeah. but then you get the drawings back whatever months two three six months later yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden those few lines that were on the drawings have now got bloody feature screens and trellising and <laughs> yeah. pergolas and yeah. like all this extra shit drawn on yeah, yeah. you're like well i didn't know about any of no, that that's like, yeah, and they, they yeah. might have this little note that to feature de to future detail <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't have future detail in my budget. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, well, that was, yeah, see, and that's why we eliminate all that. I just, yeah. You know, so we'll take ownership of it that, you know, that this, I mean, probably this last 12 months has been a little bit difficult with regards in designing to budgets, you know, but, you know, within reason. But um, generally speaking, so we'll go from there and then we'll, you know, De de depending on where the concept finishes, that will then either trigger a DA, you know, or a self assessor will go straight to a BA, and we'll take it through those. And then within those processes, really at the BA, we'll compile the quote. That'll be a fee that's all inclusive with these other services, um, which will also be um, include. Uh, which um, they can go to market. I don't. We're not. Yeah. We're not because my view is, you know, we're we're happy with our prices. It's a value arrangement. Um, you know your business. You yeah. know your numbers. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's where the fee proposal comes in, uh, and in within that, the a comprehensive quotation. So there's nothing that's missing, uh, and if there's and like we've just done one, and it's a bit debatable about one detail. We just we wore it. I mean, you make yeah. those executive decisions and, yeah. and go. You know what? I'm not going to. These guys guys have been great. Yeah, it's a no brainer. And in business, you got to do that every now and then. And, and I think like part of being a, having a good business and having a, a good 
um, I guess, relationship with clients is you do have to own little oh, things like that every yeah, now and then and wear it. Sure, but yeah. like I think that's that's where our industry has gone so wrong is that most people don't have a system for something as simple as quoting. Yeah. And like I jumped on that whole charge for a quote bandwagon. Like I was a big advocate for yeah, it. Bloody yeah. flew all over the country, <laughs> bloody promoting it. But um, it, I, I realized very quickly, like it was just another way to give the industry a bad name. And mm. like you can't have a builder charging for a one-page document yeah, that he's yeah. put together on bloody eleven o'clock one night. Like, yeah. oh yeah, there's um, got to be some substance to it. Yeah, yeah you've you got to have. Yeah. You've got to. You've got to. Well, I, I think there's to be successful with it and it's what we do with our pack process like we we solve people's problems but we add value mm. like we add and i believe the fee they pay us to do the pack process mm. saves them th that fee double that fee triple that fee in well, the long run one of the last jobs i had when i was <laughs> when i was doing the um hard dollar tenders in that room so i got approached and go around the corner so he's got he's got the DAs. It's ready. It's all the the engineering, the architectural drawings are there, and it and he's gone to tender and I'm sort of I'm on the hamster wheel tendering. And the first thing I look at this thing, and it's a ma massive reno with a big extension at the back. There's an existing pool, and in this and in this pro project, the pool gets moved in and gets moved over about a meter. <laughs> and I'm looking at it. And what's wrong with your pool? Is it, you know, is it cactus? He said, no, no, because the the deck is now getting wider, it's sort of going to be encroaching on it. And, like, it took me all about five minutes to say, why don't you cantilever the deck, you know? He goes, what do you mean? Like, this, so this guy ended up going back to the, like, because it, it was far enough away, it just was going to be closer like that would have been a forty-five thousand dollar action right oh, if it, plus yeah well plus. that's this is 10 years ago whatever it was i'll make so, so 60, yeah. 60 to seventy thousand dollars right um he, he had to kind of like, like change some engineering like no one's brought this up yeah. and he's none the wiser i never won the job i was pissed <laughs> Yeah, but, I mean, no, I wasn't pissed. At it. Well, I didn't want the job. But, but that's a perfect example of tendering. But that's like, but that's the process. They, like that's where that opportunity with what you've got in particular. If if guys are coming with, what they don't see is the potential cost savings you can bring because you're coming at it at a completely different angle to an architect. An architect has that design creativity, right? Whereas you've got buildability sensibility about it. Like you get that to come in. And you could wipe off, like, potentially, A, the heartache of proceeding on plans that will never fly anyway. Yeah. And, B, the potential cost savings is just phenomenal. Yeah. And it, to me, it's like, I know it, it's counterintuitive to pay someone when the end, like, I can get free quotes, but you're not getting yeah. this. Like, if someone came to you, it's a bit of a leap of faith because they assume that the architects, you know, yeah. but they're not, they're, their vision is on the design. Yeah. And tendering, I, I always found with tendering, it, it wasn't it wasn't only that they're putting the plans out there to get multiple prices and like you just know, like you learn after you've done it for so many years that they're just all that, it doesn't matter what you put in your proposal, mm. they're looking at the bottom line. Right. They don't give a shit what scope <laughs> of right. works. Yeah. And, but the other thing they do during that process is milk every builder for oh, info, yeah. suggestions, yeah, yeah, ideas. Yeah, yeah. And because you like, again, when we're in that scenario, you'd tender it. You'd put some suggestions forward. You'd have a few meetings. They'd yeah. obviously do, do that with a few mm. of the builders. And then you'd get the plans back for revisions and your suggestions and other builders' suggestions <laughs> have been put on there. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and oh, mate, I, it's probably one of my biggest frustrations when I look back now and just think the time I wasted. That's give, the most like, unproductive part of the pro. Of it's the just such a broken yeah, system. Yeah, like yeah. Anybody that is tendering, like I honestly can't, I, I don't see who it benefits like it, it doesn't really benefit anyone. Like the client ends up with a, well, from all the tenders that I was involved in, and we, one thing I, I used, we used to always follow up. Like, why did we miss out? Like, we try and get feedback, yeah. and and like as you know, being a builder, you're, you're doing work in the area, so you'd you'd always be driving past. Mm. Mm. Um, we've actually, I've actually got one recently. Like, we haven't tended a job for years and years and years, mm. but it's a client that went through our pack process, and it's one of the only ones. Well, we've only had about three now that 
um, haven't gone ahead. Yeah. And um, I actually just pulled up the street the other day, pulled over, jumped on my phone to check some emails, and I, I was like, "Holy shit! Um, that's the job in well, front of me there yeah. that we we uh, priced about yeah. two years ago. It's only just coming out of the ground. Like it's got the frame up. They'll start to put the roof on." Yeah. And I just sat there and laughed to myself because yeah. like, even though it's only at frame stage getting a roof on, like I'm looking at it and going, that is nothing you like... You dodged a bullet. Yeah, nothing like what I priced. But do you think I mean, what they don't... You know, one of the reasons why I think buildings get such a bad rap is because they're up against... Like to win those jobs, right, you've effectively got to cut... You've either got to drop scope and because what... Yeah, you know, mums and dads, like you said, they're looking at the bottom line. They don't realise yeah. they're not comparing apples with oranges. You know, they either lowballing allowances, like yeah. to win. Like, there's no way yeah. you're going to win these jobs. Like yeah. the honest guys, just if you put everything that the client needs in there, yeah. you're not going to get. Yeah, uh, you're not going to get. And the client, out. like I think the the worst part of this is, and um, we've got a a job that we've been through this recently, is a lot of the clients don't. Like they're, they're putting all their trust in me as a builder, the architect or the architect, and they don't really understand exactly what's on the paper. Mm. And you've really got to put in that time and make sure you have... Like one thing we really like to do is make sure that we present our proposals. Mm. Like avoid mm. emailing them, like organise a meeting and sit down as a team and talk through it. So yeah. have a set of plans, have our proposal, talk through it. And the amount of times we do that and the clients... Um, like sitting like so we'll we'll with our process now we do cost revisions at every stage of the drawings yeah and even by doing it that way there can, there can be a uh something that's that been added to the drawings there that the client may not have been aware of and because you're going through the drawings and your costings at the same time and you're pointing these things out you're like oh and the, like so i've a big part of this is i don't use the word budget anymore it's project spend mm. because through these conversations you're educating the client and they see they see value in different things. Yeah. And when as they start to learn what value is on certain items, yeah. they might be like, Well, yeah, I don't want to spend twenty grand there. I'd rather spend another twenty grand on my kitchen. Yeah. Like yeah, we're sure. we're cooks. We don't live outdoors. <laughs> like yeah. so things like that. Yeah. So yeah. like the value add a builder brings to the table when you have a good process. Um, and I, I think it's it's probably for the whole industry. Like it's not just builders, like even tradies, if they're out there quoting work for people, like mm. Ultimately, you want to be solving people's problems and adding value Absolutely. to what you're going to deliver them. It's got to be value. I mean, yeah. if you're price-driven, it's a pretty tough industry, you know. Yeah. I mean, like you said, the subbies are the same. I, I sort of don't have the cheapest subbies. I have guys that perform, you know. I know yeah. that we'll be there when I need them um, or if there's an issue, I know they're going to come in, you know. Yeah. And I, you know, as long as they're hitting the budgets that we're setting, then like, they get the jobs. So yeah. it's, and, it, and it's it, it's better for your business absolutely. as well. Absolutely, yeah. You've yeah. got to rely on it, and that, yeah, because that's obviously the finished product at the end of the day. So yeah, it's across the board within the industry. It's a value proposition. You've got to target value. It's, um, yeah, I think it. Um, like I think something for trades and builders to it makes conversations a lot easier when you know your your data doesn't it oh. like when you know what it's physically taking for you break even running costs overheads all those numbers the, it changes the way that you communicate with people i believe like you 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 can make decisions you can have conversations you can give answers like you're not having a conversation with someone and beating around the bush humming and hiring or yeah oh, yeah like i might be able to drop 10 grand there or just let me check this like when you know your numbers and you know what what's, what's in the job, yeah, yeah. you've got certainty. Yeah. Oh, look, and it's essential. I mean, and I was one of the worst, you know, when I first came back, you know, just um, what's the, what's my margin? I don't know. It's this number, you know, whatever. What a, and and, and uh, oh, The industry told me 10%. Yeah, yeah. Just, and then you think, and then years later you find out what you break even. And it's, Jesus, that was a good charity service. I've been running there for a while. But, um, but isn't it a good feeling about like... Cause oh, it, once you like, know instantly, it. Instantly, like... Yeah. That's what... Like, it was like light bulb moment. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Once you know it, you can never, you can never unsee it, so yeah. to speak. You know? So yeah. it's there, it's done, and you can just move forward with absolute certainty. And you know that if you go below that, you're going to be trading in, you know, yeah. like you're going to be trading insolvent effectively. Whereas yeah. I think that's everyone else muddles their way through it. You know, not everyone else, obviously others that are in trouble. 
you know, and I was one of those yeah. guys initially. So, like, so what do you, um, mate? What do you think is more important, cash flow or turnover? Oh, um, cash, sorry, cash flow or turnover? Um, I like think so margin many, is the most important thing. On like a lot of people aim for turnover. Just, forget about turnover. Yeah, um, like that's people drop turnover to me and it's oh, it's like a swinging appendage sort yep. of competition. You've got know? to have cash, don't you? You've Mate, got to have can, cash in the business. It's got to be. Oh, and like You've got to have some capital because, and cash is the most important thing. I mean, turnover is just, I think it, it's one of those vanity metrics that mm. people get caught up with. Yeah, It's more important. Like I'd rather have a smaller crew, make, like you say, make more make bigger margins and you know and sleep at night and not be burnt out people chasing turnover i think the turn but if your business isn't right you're accelerating that decline with yeah with you're, larger you're, turnover, you're yeah. digging yourself a deeper hole aren't you because yeah. like, so many well i know for a long time i focused on turnover yeah. and just think because i had this i had this percentage profit number in my head and i just thought well the more turnover i'm going to make that's more yeah. i'm going to make but <laughs> all you're doing is increasing yeah. your yeah. your you're digging a deeper hole and, it's, sure, and yeah. it's harder and harder to get out of but um because I hear it all the time, like, and I really avoid the question now. Like with Live Life Build, we don't talk about turnover. Like we talk about like you need to know your running cost, yeah. and you need to you need to have a figure for the profit you want your company to make. Yeah. Like turnover doesn't mean shit. No. Like, yeah. Oh no, no. Like I said, it's a it's almost a vanity, you know, name dropping arrangement. So yeah. And I think the guys until you have that until you know your break even point, like that was really an epiphany for me once i knew that you go shit i don't need to worry about like i know yeah. you know you, it shows you what you need to turn over to get to it right yeah on the margins you need to get and then you can obviously address obviously the overhead element from if you have to to pull it back um but the, the, the things like you know guys drop numbers and turnover and i'm thinking yeah that's fine, but if you you know if you're doing a two million dollar home and you've done your ass, well you know you're not. What's the point? Yeah, because yeah. every like everything in our biz, in our industry is focused on turnover, isn't it? Like mm. we're licensed, like our licenses crazy. are yeah. based on turnover. Our all of our fees, yeah, our insurances, yeah. Yeah. like, and it's really such a. It, it's just a yeah. It's a number that means nothing. Oh, like, I think so. Yeah. But um, so what what was your like? Did you learn all about your break even, your margin things once you started getting yeah. um, coaching, coaching or mentoring? Yeah. yeah. You, and you think so? I, I mean, obviously, I specialize. The, the the big commercial builders are they were big on in house training. So we would, yeah. but we never did anything like like. And to be honest, I think they could have done with a bit of it themselves, <laughs> just quietly. But um, they um, the whole industry needs it. Mate. Oh, man, it just needs yeah. a bit shake up I don't, you know. that's why we're here level up we're, we're creating a new <laughs> yeah, industry mate keep it. Yeah, stick it to the man um <laughs> but uh yeah that was that was that was sort of once that came and that was pretty early into it you know all of a sudden you started it actually like you said it, it it's almost you get that uh, um, you feed then on you 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 sort of start chasing more and more info you're thinking what else don't i know that i could improve yeah. and then and then, um, yeah, that sort of it, obviously the business evolved, and you know we've sort of been much more <clears> successful, <throat> much more manageable. Although last, like I said, last twelve months has been yeah. pretty hectic, but notwithstanding, obviously the occasional pandemic, it's been um, <laughs> it's been oh, it's been such a better yeah. operation and so much more manageable life balance. You know, still there's still moments where you're obviously yeah you do what you do, but it's not that hamster wheel that you were just yeah. constantly in and never really known until the end of the year when the accountant said, oh, boy, you got a tax bill. So I don't know how that works. You've got no money, you know. So yeah. whereas now you've got systems, you've got, you know, um, processes, it's much more manageable. So like you've uh, mentioned a few times as we've been talking, the there's a lot more to it than just getting coaching and mentoring, isn't it? Like you've got to be open-minded. Like if you're not open-minded and yeah. you're not willing to listen or have a, like see other people's opinions and other ways, and because at the end of the day we're all different, aren't we? Yeah. Like everyone's got different views and yeah. ideas on how things should be done, and like. But it's like, not also within the industry too. Like yeah. it's like I, 
Well, I'm sort of big. Like if I go to read a book, I'm asleep within, you know, I'm yeah. having my nana nap. I haven't even got to the end of the first page. So I'm big on audible books and yeah. podcasts, right? And I also, there's a... Give us three. Give us three uh, podcasts you listen to. What's three things? Audible, podcast? Uh, I listen to Mark Boris's, um, uh, that's interesting, The Mentor. Was it The Mentor? The, the Mentor? Yeah. Yeah. I listened to a father, a couple of others. I won't repeat. Um, <laughs> uh, there's one on uh, small business, big marketing. Yeah. Uh, at Tim Reed. Uh, also listened to a, a bunch of digital marketing. Uh, one is construction handbook, an American uh, construct leading edge yep. construction. Also listen. I won't plug the competition here, but, <laughs> but another one as well. And then a couple of others on digital marketing because it's. Yep. I mean. I, I'm older than you. I sort of, you know, technology was a struggle for me. That was the one subject I failed pretty badly at uni, yeah. sort of Excel yeah. of all things. But then it's about all these things of getting exposed. And now I sort of, you know, it's, you just got to punch through it. Uh, you got, you're going to make mistakes. You've got to learn, got to expose yourself. You know, we do build a trend and the rest of it. Uh, by the time I went, started, Working for these other corporates, we were doing build soft, you know, um, estimating yeah. packages, um, solo assist. So I'm pretty, pretty good with the technology now. But yeah, you know, that's because I've pushed myself and applied myself and just yeah. taught myself how to do it. Um, and that's the thing, you know, like, what do I need this? Um, Ten, you know, twenty. Prior to probably that last bit of coaching, I wouldn't have sort of exposed myself to it. But yeah, I listened to. That and other books, uh, books like even my favourite book is real James Clear's Atomic Habits, right? Yeah, it's all a, about, yeah. Yeah. and it's about systems, really. Yeah. You know, you don't rise to your discipline, you fall to your systems. You know? yeah. um, and I'm, unfortunately, I should reread it because I've fallen to a few <laughs> low points lately. But um, but that, that's but that's all right, isn't it? Like to to continue to have growth, yeah, for sure. You've got to well back to mindset, like. Yeah. Instead of thinking of something as a problem, yeah. you've got to find a – like everything's got a solution. For sure. It's just that like I know in my old habits, all I did was focus on the problem yeah. instead yeah. of letting the problem go and, well, yeah. what do we How do? We How do we get it, around yeah. it? What's what's next? All right, yeah. Well, we might lose a bit of money there, but yeah. what are we going to do differently next time? Yeah, yeah. No, so which – but that's massive. Like those things are like – the stuff you have at your fingertips that can potentially help. Um, and then some of it like I – Bought one, and um, you know, I just I keep on rolling over. Yeah, I just yeah. do the audible books. And yeah. I just I'm sitting through, and like I said, I just I'd rather chew gum. Just but I out of <laughs> persistence, I'm going. How, how much longer? I've, like there's another forty chapters. You know, <laughs> I'm in now. I'm in. I've got to see yeah. how this thing finishes. And now, oh, oh. but not all like that. But other ones just on personal development. A lot on yeah. personal development. Yeah. Um, and then um. Yeah, it's the podcast as well. So there's, I mean, I can't remember the last time I put the radio on. You know, no, I don't no, know. I, mean, I've, I've, um, I actually had this, I was thinking yesterday or the last couple of days. So, um, like my, my main truck's shit itself at the moment. It's in getting the gearbox fixed. So I'm actually, I'm hired one of the young apprentices, a little Hilux. And yeah. it's, I don't know what model it is, but it's got no Bluetooth or anything. Yeah. So I've actually been like, trying to listen to shit on my phone sitting on the seat <laughs> yeah, I, uh, don't touch it it cost me well, five thousand dollars the other day I yeah well, I, I got done yeah, i got done yeah, i don't know i don't thing, know yeah. where the hell it was it was sitting on the seat <laughs> and they got me with my finger on it yeah like, what the hell yeah i know so um it's not a bad money grab is it? so anyway i've been avoiding that but and i so i found myself getting like lost like, i don't know what it is but mm. like i've just been so entrenched in all these audible books and all this stuff when i jump in my truck that's all i listen yeah, to yeah and I've been really, really a lot more focused the last few years. Mm. And like in the last three weeks driving this ute around, and I was thinking to myself about this yesterday, I'm getting sucked back into the hamster wheel. Yeah. yeah. Like I've, I can't listen to my phone because I've been fined, so yeah. I don't want any more fines. I haven't got any points <laughs> left. And so I've been turning the radio. If, I'm, if people aren't calling me, I've got the radio on. Yeah. And then I've found that because I've got the radio on now, I'm hearing all the shit that's going on in the world. Oh, don't which, do it. Which yeah, means... Yeah. And, and I don't know why, I've, I've obviously ignored it, but for some reason, because I'm hearing it, now when I'm on site, I'm hearing other people talking oh, about it, and I'm yeah, getting caught yeah. up in these shit yeah, conversations. Yeah. 
And in like literally two or three weeks, I'm just, they were yesterday I was like, get out of this, Dwayne. Like you've fallen back into this yeah, trap. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I made that commitment, I reckon, four years ago. I stopped watching the news. Yeah. You know, because everything's hyped, yeah. right? And it's just so negative. Oh, it's terrible. I mean, if it bleeds, it leads, right? Yeah. That's how the news runs. So, And they need to sensationalise it. And if it's legitimate, you'll eventually hear it. It'll, it'll, but yeah. because it's because they need the net sensation, that'll pass. You know, and it, it was. I reckon that was the best thing for personal yeah. development and for my headspace. Yeah, I stopped. I stopped watching that, um, and man, I've never looked back. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same, mate. And I couldn't. It was like, yeah, it was just unbelievable when I started pulling myself up yesterday. So. Um, today I've actually driven around in silence, like, I, like nothing, nothing on my phone, yeah, nothing yeah. on the radio, and I've had a better day for it. I'd, but, I'd um, be a little bit worried, just <laughs> be alone in my thoughts. My, no, a, little a little bit troubling. Have a little bit of a sing song, but um, yeah. it is. We can get so caught up in shit that we is out of our control yeah. that we we can't do anything about. It's not our problem. Yeah. And it just takes over our lives, doesn't it? Yeah, like, yeah it's like consuming, best, yeah. Yeah, the best thing I ever did was turn off the news, don't yeah. read any newspaper yeah. articles or anything. I've got no notifications on my phone yeah. so I don't get caught up in all that shit. But um, it's it's really interesting and I'm really glad you touched on that, that it's there's more It's more than just getting some coaching to be a, a good builder or a good tradie. Yeah. Like if you want to be successful, you've really got to open your mind and oh, for sure, and yeah. adapt to, to new things. So, I think so, yeah. Um, mate, just to wrap it up, it's been a really good conversation. Like, so what I know, like being in the industry, it's it's a hard game. It can be very stressful. What what do you do to to get away from it? What's your what's your breakout? Family, um, traveling, camping. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm pretty social animal. Um, <laughs> So, um, so you live a recovered, now you're back into yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I sort of hold out and I make up for lost time when I have to, obviously. Um, it's the the kids are a bit of a full, like I've, I've got twin daughters that are about to crack 14. I don't know what's going on in that house. It's all about my pay grade. <laughs> the girls, I, I hear the house normally before I see it, but, you know, we're sort of, I'm of that generation, you know, we're a 70s generation where... You were left to your own devices, so to speak, and you know, which probably is good for character building. You know, sometimes yeah. pretty detrimental. we pro- I've probably gone. You know, I'm my. I've made the rod for my own back, so to speak. You know, I've sort of helicoptered the kids a bit, so they're sort of consuming. But the flip side is it's a pretty social sort of element with the yeah. with the the kids. Pair. I think that's how it sort of worked. The kids' parents have sort of got. Yeah, loose together, so to speak. And the kids, <laughs> kids are the ones that keep us on the straight and narrow, uh, which is a little bit troubling at my, at my age. But um, I haven't. Uh, yeah, did like I said, we do the. I sort of try and do a bit of the traveling. There's no campers in my family, mate. They, uh, it's, no, it's all beneath it's them. Yeah, it's all beneath them. That yeah. I mean, if I suggested it, um, that would I'd be the only one on that trip, I think. But um, well, we, we were talking about before. You, you love Fraser, like yeah. You... So Fraser's my happy place. Yeah, yeah it's it's, it's a one for the lads. It's uh, like I've said, I've done a fair bit of trip, like done a lot of travel, and it, I, I just find it really unique. It's um, and you're off the grid. I think that was a big thing we were talking about. I mean, I go out west with. There's a couple of lads. I've missed that last year or two. We sort of have a – we get a leave pass from the spouses and we all head out um, yep. different places. Uh, I mean, two years ago was we had the leave. We were supposed to go to um, Birdsville, but they got washed out. So we had the leave pass to say, well, we'll use it or lose it. We're going, <laughs> we're going somewhere. <laughs> Bark Holden had the Tree of Knowledge weekend and, Jesus, it got loose there. Um, <laughs> I was no ma- I was no uh, benefit to anyone out there. But so what, you head out there to go to like oh, just, horse we just races? Go to or... Oh, well, yeah, they had the yeah. they had the races on that week. Well, it was a, yeah. That, well, they had the tree of knowledge thing, and then it just kicked on. The races were on that day, but two years ago, I think when the pandemic opened, when they just opened Queensland, where you could go beyond two hundred and fifty k's. You're out of there. We no, we went to we we ended up in the Simpson. We went to Birdsville. Like it's planets just lined up. There's Four of us that sort of go, 
Um, said, but was, we could swing it on the Monday. I think um, Pelagie sort of said opened it up within the state on the Sunday, and by Wednesday night we're in the middle of the Simpson. I was pretty <laughs> drunk. I remember that, and I wake up. And I don't remember cramping because it was so cold. Yeah, you know, because we're all drinking beside a fire pit. It's such a good idea. And then you fall asleep, the fire pit goes out. I just remember cramping. It was that. I said, I don't like this place at all. But yeah, it's, look, it's it's about. I guess it's about coming. You sort of. Um, so you got you got to uh, you got to have a little bit of a break. Oh, you got to have your outs. Yeah. You got to have your vices. I mean, you know, we're sort of. It'd be a pretty mundane without it. But, uh, yeah, look, we sort of – the social element is still playing. I mean, you slow down. I used to play the rugby and the cricket a bit, and now I just, I'm just playing tennis. And get, I'm not getting too, running down too many shots these days. It's sort of <laughs> – that'll be a winner, another winner. Um, just not running. But, um, yeah, you sort of keep active. There was a, a bunch of us washed-up dads would do the boot camp in the morning, so I just yeah. had to stop the last couple of months because of – um, logistics at work I was just needed there period yeah. but that was that was two to three times a week sort of and that was actually to be honest that's a great thing because it gets that endorphin hit and gets those uh, you get get that going first thing 5 30 and I s- exercise is important eh? absolutely it's been a massive thing for me yeah yeah I've, I've probably fallen off it a little yeah. bit lately but I'll get yeah. back onto it in a few months when I get past this next stage but uh, yeah no it's massive and it's great for your heads it look i think it's it's more for your head space i mean i'm yeah i'm certainly you know my poor old pt he doesn't put me on any of his socials it wouldn't be good for his <laughs> business it wouldn't be good for his business so uh he just the the before shots he hasn't got too many of the after shots coming from my side of the ledger but um but it yeah. is it, it's it's getting it's just being active isn't it like, it's absolutely it's just a, getting your mind and it's probably the most important part if you can't if your headspace is you know like you said yeah you, you've been there i mean we've all been there you have those moments like i have moments now and you, but you punch it like it's manageable like but and if your headspace because i just get that hit that endorphin hit in the morning and it just sets you up for a better day um, yeah and you know this is and they might be a shit show but you're in a better <laughs> <laughs> waiting for you go all right but i'm ready i'm ready i'm pumped yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah it's good no well, mate thanks very much for coming on and uh telling your story and uh, there's definitely been some uh good tips in there for everyone so look guys as usual if you um no questions a silly question if there's something you want to know or you want to come on the podcast give us a shout out and uh yeah we're here to create a new building industry and make it better for everyone involved so uh cheers for listening shoot us a message and uh yeah look forward to seeing you on the next one everything discussed during the level up podcast with me Dwayne pierce is based solely on my own personal experiences and those experiences of my guests The information, opinions and recommendations presented in this podcast are for general information only and any reliance on the information provided in this podcast is done at your own risk. We recommend that you obtain your own professional advice in respect to the topics discussed during this podcast.